Hey React Native friends, what's up Simon here from Galaxy Star Dev back with something that in the past I would probably have called quick win, but we're using a new term here. Today we're starting a new series and we're calling these React Native Essentials. So every other week I will try to drop a short video focused on a specific topic and today's topic is the draw navigation, which honestly caused some headache to me in the beginning. Like how does it work? What's the main screen? How do I customize the menu, the items? And that's exactly what we're gonna look at today. Day. There will hopefully be more essentials in the future, so already let me know in the comment what kind of videos and specific features of React Native I should take a closer look at, present to you in this shorter video format. For everyone who wants more guidance and more structured learning path, check out the galaxies.dev zero to hero mission, which you can get for 50 bucks off with the code essentials. So go to galaxies.dev, check out the zero to hero mission and use the code essentials to get $50 off the price. And now let's dive into the draw. So I've already started a new application. I can already gun, uh, get into this with Bunix Expo. You can of course also use NPX or Yarn or whatever you fancy. But I just use Bun because it's the fastest. Now we could do this, but there is one additional package that we need to install and also the default Expo application comes with a lot of stuff included that we don't need. So I want to run Bun Run Reset Project. That will just remove the files in here. I don't want to keep them around. So now I have a clean setup. Now, if you want to implement a draw navigation in your application, the first thing you need to do is install some packages. In fact, most of this is already installed. So if we copy this over, you're going to see that uh, there's the React Native gesture handler and reanimated. That's usually already installed in your application, so you don't really need this. So we'll just do the first part, Banix Expo install the React Navigation draw package. Now that's enough and I can actually use the Expo Go application for this. That's probably gonna happen for most of our React Native essentials as it's quite easy to um, use all of those things. This is definitely not the application. This should reload once and then we should see our new app. Okay, here it is, fresh application. Now, let's start from the basics. How do we actually add a draw and what is a draw? Well, a draw is this thing where you have this toggle uh, and then you can bring up the menu and you can select something and then it will render in your main screen. It all starts by using a draw in here. Um, so let's bring in the draw from uh, our package, from the Expo Router draw package. And then when our application reloads, I don't know, will this, yeah, this actually already changes to the default draw. So it will pick up our one index page, it will be rendered here, and we see the content here of that index page, so edit this screen. This is the super duper basic. Now, usually you also need to wrap this around with the gesture handler root view. This is required because you usually slide open and close this. I, I don't know exactly why it works currently. Uh, it honestly shouldn't work, but usually you would go ahead like this. You give this flex one and you wrap this around your draw layout and close it off. No big change here yet. Now, where do we continue? Well, let's add a second page. Let's add a second page and call that one news.tsx. Right, native, okay, I didn't call this TSX, I call this TDSX, that's not a good point. Okay, page, and this is my news page. So, what happens? Uh, nothing, I should probably reload. And now the draw automatically picks up the second page that you add next to the layout. And it doesn't matter if this is a top level or inside a folder. Just keep in mind that the files next to your layout file will be rendered uh, in the layout in the default. Now you can also make this explicit if this is unclear to you. So instead of doing it and letting the draw pick up the stuff, you can also define the actual screens by passing in their name. So I can do draw screen index and the second one was I think news. If I hit save, is this now not connected? Like do I have to refresh this whole thing the whole time? Let's maybe add this, close this once and press I again. I feel like I wanna, I was kind of out of sync here. Okay, but anyway, nothing really should change because it is still using those two pages. 
Um, the only difference is that we can now customize some options and you can customize some general options on the draw by passing in screen options or you can customize them per item. So you can also dive into an options object for every single screen. Now let's take a look at two examples. For this one up here for the general draw, I want to set the draw active tint color to red. This will change this underlying color and the highlight color of that item to red. Additionally, you could also do something fancy like draw height status bar on open. And now notice right now we see this bar up there the whole time. If we save this, it will actually be there and then fade out. I don't know, in some applications I like it, in some I don't, choose for yourself. And all of this is by the way possible because we're using of course Expo, Expo Router and the Draw, but we're also under the hood of course using React Navigation and Draw Navigator. So everything that you find in the React Navigation documentation in terms of the props here will apply to our Draw in here. And that's usually where I get most of my information from. Now, let's say I want to customize this a bit more. Let's say on this screen, I want to have a specific draw label. I want to have a specific title that shows up up here. And I also might want to use Ionicons. Oh no, because I disabled this, I don't get imports anymore. <laughs> okay, let's see. So now we see the index page is called My App. In the menu, it is called Home and it has an icon. So with these specific options, you can dive deeper into how every um, item of your draw looks. So for example, for news, I could do the same. I could give it an icon. I could give it a specific name and also a specific icon. And of course, I could also change the whole styling, like the roundness, the padding, uh, the styling here of our items. But that's pretty much the basic of the draw. So uh, everything in here pretty much specifies the items here. And based on the name of the item, we see the page covered. Uh, it also adds automatically this draw toggle button up there. Now, in uh, about 50% of the cases, based on some statistics, you want a custom draw navigation. And a custom draw navigation is pretty easy done. So let's say you want to have like uh, an image up here or you want to have an additional button. You want to have some sort of footer text or whatever you fancy. In that case, what you can do is you simply bring up a new function here and call this uh, custom draw content. It won't work if you, no, and Simon, stop talking trash. You can name this whatever you want, of course. But this has draw content component props, and that is true. And we can now return our own implementation here. So if we want to just mimic what we already have in there, we could use the draw content scroll view. Um, and feed in all the props using the spread operator here. And then inside of that draw content scroll view, uh, didn't we add the, uh, we added, yeah, we're children are missing, yeah, that's fine. We can have a draw item list. And again, let's pass in uh, all the props here and close it off. Now, so far we're not using it. So let's go down to the draw and say, hey, uh, we actually want a different kind of draw content. We want to render our custom draw content. And now you're going to notice that nothing <laughs> changes. And that's actually good because that is what's pretty much happening under the hood if you use the default. But we're now free and we can do whatever we want in there. For example, as I said before, I might want to render an image here. So let's bring in everything that we need. Uh, we need to import the view from React Native. Uh, we also need the image um, and then let's hit save. And now we're rendering our own image because we're now having a custom draw content. Be careful. I sometimes, oops, uh, place this in a different component and that general works. Like if you do a new file and put it in a component that generally works. However, the live reload for me was sometimes spotty in that case. I don't know exactly why I like reload. It shouldn't, but it was just telling you how it was. Now, if you have a custom draw content, you usually have this for more than just displaying this up here. You usually also want to render some sort of information on that page. You might get that information from an API call, from a local database, and I will just fake this now with some generic menu items. I want to render these on a page, and if you know Expo Router, you know that you can have like a wildcard here. 
and that would render our page and we had access to that ID in the URL. So you can grab this using the use local search params, use local, if you spell this correctly, it's usually easier. Use local search params from Expo Router, and then we can use my ID. Now, I don't wanna write this entirely, so let's update this. So here's the page, you're on page ID, and I also added this line here, which allows us to change what we have in the header up here on that screen. So you don't need to rely on the layout files to set options. You can also do this on a per page basis here, which is usually quite helpful if you're working with IDs and stuff. All right, this is my ID page. Now I wanna render all of these items in the menu so I can navigate to that ID page. The first thing we're gonna notice is that, oh, we have this page. Well, this happens because Expo Router picks up all the files in our folder structure. So if you wanna get rid of a specific file that's here for whatever reason, you can declare it in your view. The only thing you have to do is you wanna set a specific styling on that page. So in the case for our ID page, I could add an entry for exactly matching the file name. So you see it has to be this name. And then I would set the draw item style to display none. And boom, it is gone. Does it look a bit ugly? Yes, maybe, but it's also quite effective. Um, now let's continue. So we want to get rid of this generic entry, but we definitely want to have the entries um, up here under our list. So how do we go about this? If you want to, you can of course keep the draw item list, which uses the specified screens in here. So this will just render that stuff. You could also manually do this if you want to, but you don't have to. Now we can go over all of my menu items. So let's call menu items dot map. And for every item, I want to call something and return a new draw item. That's pretty much what's used in the draw in the first place. For the draw item, we need some uh, settings. So we need the key, of course, like in every iteration. So we can use item.id. We also want to have a label here. So let's use item.title. Uh, and then on press, we should probably do something. So in our case, I would like to use the Expo Router. So I can just bring that in with a hook. So say const router equals use router from Expo Router. And with that in place, we can go here and say router.push usually. You don't really want to replace, that should, uh, will probably look ugly. And you want to push to a specific page. In my case, the URL would be slash item.id, so nothing crazy. All right, hitting save, and we see we're instantly rendering three items, 42, 43, 44. If I click on them, I'm on page 42. If I go here, I'm on page 43, and here, page 44. So the general routing logic to dynamic pages of the router is working. You can, of course, also add sort of a little separation here between that list and your own list. So let's say we just bring in a little view and a text, nothing crazy, but it adds a nice separation here between our generic items and then like the dynamic items. You can also see this in the ChatGPT application where all your previous chats are loaded in uh, that list. Okay, now one problem, if we're on home, this has a nice red tint. If I'm here, I don't have it. That is because uh, by default, the, the focus effect here isn't really working. So we need to check if this page is focused, okay? So if I just say true, every page would be focused and actually we would see it's not getting the right tint color. I wonder if I can spread in the props again here and get the red color. Uh, let's do a reload here. Yeah, I, w I wasn't expecting that to be honest. <laughs> But what you can do is you can just set the active tint color yourself. So active tint color set to red, and then we would have exactly the same color as before. So let's get rid of the props again. Now, how do we get the focus to work correctly? Well, we can get the current path name. So let's get the path name using use path name from Expo Router. And that will give us information about where we currently are inside our application. And we can now do a simple check 
if the path name um, is equal to whatever URL our item has. Now, in my case, this is pretty easy. As I said, this is just slash ID. If you had folders like draw item something, then make sure you include this in here to get the is active correct. But now we can use is active for the path instead. Do another reload because otherwise our application gets really mad with us. And now we should see that we're able to go here and go here and here and everything works just as if these items were default items in our menu. Now, this is most of the magic of a draw. Again, you can find out all the other stuff here in the draw navigation, how you style different labels and how you use different opening modes. I would usually rely on what is default for your operating system. So for iOS, it's a uh, slide and for other platforms, it's front. But again, I would probably keep it to the default. But I just want to show you two quick additional notes. So if you for some reason want to toggle your page from, let's say here, the index, what you can do is uh, you can bring in the navigation and this is quite uh, like if you look up the uh, documentation on Expo, Naviga uh, on Expo Router, you will probably not find anything. And if you look into React Navigation, it's done a bit more ugly, I think. So here's an easy way to do it in a type safe way. You want to bring in the draw actions from React Navigation. So with these draw actions, you have more types available, like open draw, close draw, toggle draw. And I can now use this in my page. So let's also bring in a button from React Native. And then on my button, uh, let's get rid of the text here. Add a button, I will call this title toggle draw. And now we can say on press, I want to dispatch an action using the navigation. So you call navigation.dispatch. And you wanna dispatch from draw actions either close draw, jump to, open or toggle. Let's just for the fun of it use toggle draw and then close our button. So this should give us a nice toggle button and you see clicking the toggle draw automatically toggles it. I can't toggle it again because it's already open but if I had that button in the menu I could also toggle it from there. And that just helps to control it from code uh, in your app. And now one last thing because I noticed before that if you set this up with multiple layout files and stacks and especially on Android, sometimes this button here get lost. Or for whatever reason, you want to mimic this action here where you toggle the draw with a button. And there's actually a component that you can bring in and it is called the draw toggle button. This is an additional button that you can place anywhere on your page. So I can just throw this button in on this page and we'll have this button to toggle a view. Of course, it looks absolutely ugly in there. So maybe sometimes you want to have it uh, in the stack screen included. So in that case, you could bring up the options here again. And then you could say something like header, right. That's usually where you want to place these things, either in the header left or header right. And then you say in the header right, please use the draw toggle button. And boom, you have a button up here that toggles the menu. Now, if you had a second menu, of course, you don't want to place the draw bottle, a draw toggle button in the top right. Um, but this is just a showcase of how you could use the draw toggle button. And that's it already for today's React Native Essential about the draw navigation. I hope you enjoyed this quick format that covered a lot of ground in a quick way. I hope it wasn't too fast. I think it probably was. So let me know in the comments what you will think about the React Native Essentials, if you want to see more and what kind of topics I should highlight in future React Native Essentials. Of course, also check out galaxies.dev. Use code ESSENTIALS for 50 bucks off the React Native zero to hero mission and i'd love to welcome you inside stay subscribed to the channel for more react native essentials and epic videos coming up and oh if you want to continue watching i think on uh either this side probably up here is a great video about the react native tech stack recommendation that i currently made check it out i'm pretty sure you're gonna like that as well and i will catch you in the next one so until then happy coding simon